Hello everyone, this is Dr. Archana Singh, Senior Consultant in Cornea and Refractive Services at Shaker Eye Hospital. Today we will be talking about an important structure of the eye which determines the color of your eyeball. Also let us look into the various uh, functioning of this structure. Today I will be talking about iris. What is iris? If you see in the cross section of the eye model, iris is the uh, annular thin pigmented structure of the eyeball which determines the color of the eyeball. In the cross section of the eye, if you see, the front transparent portion of the eye is called as the cornea. Behind that, a thin annular pigmented structure is called as the iris. Iris is a thin muscular structure. Uh, you can call it as a diaphragm or screen. And in the center of this diaphragm or iris, there is a small blackish circular opening which is called as the pupil. So, let us look into the structure and functioning of the iris. Uh, iris has various colors and pattern which varies from person to person and it is unique for the person. Just like our uh, fingerprint scanning and the fingerprint which is unique for a person, even the iris scanning is unique and it can be used as a biometric measurement. So what determines the color of our eyeball? It is the iris which determines the color of our eyeball. Iris has pigment called as melanin, uh, which is the same pigment which is present in our skin and hair. Depending on the uh, amount of pigment or melanin present in the iris, the color of the eyeball can vary from light brown to dark brown. It can also be gray, blue, green, amber colored, depending on the variation of this pigment. Even if you, uh, if you look at the pattern of the iris, different people will have different iris patterns. Next, coming to the pupil. The center small blackish circular opening in the iris is called as the pupil. So pupil regulates the amount of light which enters the eyeball and which reaches the retina. In a bright light, the pupil constricts and in dim light, the pupil dilates. So there are various muscles which helps in this constriction and dilatation. There is something called as sphincter pupillae, which contracts to constrict the size of the pupil in bright light so that lesser amount of light enters your eyeball. In dim light conditions, there is something called as dilator pupillae, which dilates the pupil and more amount of light enters the uh, eyeball so that you are able to see in a uh, dark condition. Next coming to the uh, size and shape of pupil. The size and shape of pupil can again vary from person to person and it can vary between the two eyes. If there is a variation in the size of the pupil between the two eyes, the term is called as anisochoria. So what are the reasons for this variation in the pupil size or anisochoria? In 20% of normal population, the pupil size can vary between the two eyes, which is called as physiological uh, variation. The other reasons for change in the pupil uh, size is it could be some underlying neurological uh, causes uh, following use of some eye drops uh, where if a constricting eye drop is used the pupil can constrict or a dilating eye drop is used the pupil can be dilated but the effect of eye drops will be temporary and once the effect wears off the pupil size will come back to normal. 
other conditions it could be age related in some people with age the pupil size can be narrow we call it as senile meiosis or meiotic pupils diabetics also can have small size in the of the pupil so does this change in the uh, or variation in the size of the pupil affect us many times no the patient can remain asymptomatic but if there are any um, associated symptoms like uh, blurred vision diplopia uh, we have to investigate and look for any neurological cause in association with the neurologist the ophthalmologist will uh, help you to assess uh, if there is any underlying problem Uh, so as i told many patients can be asymptomatic because of this variation in the pupil size some people can have symptoms like blurred vision uh, double vision or diplopia uh, they will not be able to focus or there will be a loss of accommodation because of which the vision can be blurred some people also can face light increased light sensitivity because of the larger pupil and more light entering the eyes next coming to the shape of the pupil uh, even the shape can vary from person to person or between the eyes normally it is a central circular small black opening sometimes the pupil can be displaced it may not be in the center it may not be circular so uh, many times it can be uh, from birth there can be variation in the uh, pupil uh, size and shape uh, sometimes there can be uh, absence of this iris completely or partially if it is partially absent then it is called as coloboma if the iris is completely absent from birth itself it is called as an iridia the rest of the eye usually functions normally even in such cases but the vision can be compromised next coming to other functions of the iris the iris is situated between the cornea the front black uh, transparent portion of the eyeball and uh, behind the lens in between the cornea and the iris there is a space where the fluid or Uh, circulates it is called as the aqueous humor this maintains the pressure of the eyeball if the space between cornea and the iris is very narrow there can be obstruction to the fluid circulation which can give rise to a uh, raised sudden rise in the intraocular pressure uh, something called as angle closure glaucoma so if your ophthalmologist feels the space is very narrow you may have to undergo um, a laser a small laser opening to, which creates an additional channel for the fluid circulation as a prophylaxis so that the uh, increase in the eye pressure or acute attack of glaucoma can be uh, averted so are there any conditions which can change the color of this iris yes if there is loss of pigment or pigment dispersion uh, from iris then the color of the iris can change this can happen in conditions like uh, iritis or uveitis which is an inflammatory condition where there is loss of pigments so there can be patchy hypopigmentation or loss of color in the iris or the entire uh, iris color can lighten uh next following uh, in some cases following injuries or trauma or in some cases uh, following surgery also the color of the iris can get uh, affected same with the pupil size uh, shape as well uh following inflammations as i told iritis or uveitis the pupil shape can vary it may not be circular uh even following injuries or surgeries also sometimes the pupil shape can change what are the conditions which can affect this uh, iris uh iris is a vascular structure it is a thin muscle it has blood supply and nerve supply 
Usually the blood vessels on the iris are not prominently seen. Sometimes the blood vessels can become prominent on the iris but this signifies some underlying eye condition. It could be following glaucoma called as neovascular glaucoma. It could be a sign of uncontrolled diabetic retinopathy. So if there are prominent blood vessels on iris, your ophthalmologist will do a detailed examination of your eye to find out the underlying cause. So iris can get affected in conditions called as iritis or uveitis, which is an inflammation of the eyeball. So this can cause symptoms like redness, pain, light sensitivity, also blurred vision. So many times you will need anti-inflammatory medications to control this uh, inflammation in the iris. Can you change the color of the eyeball naturally? No. As I explained, the color of the eyeball, which in turn is because of the color of the iris, uh, and this is genetically determined, so the color and pattern of the iris cannot be naturally changed. I hope this video helped you to get brief knowledge about these important structures of the eye, which is iris and pupil, their uh, functions and uh, the conditions affecting them. Thank you.